Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, have you ever felt like you're going nowhere fast? Well, that's exactly how the competitors felt at the Dutch National Headwind Championships on Saturday. And we've got that, plus the latest round of the Brico Cross from Essen and the Car Park Cannonball Race from Christchurch in New Zealand, plus all the other major news in pro cycling. They don't have many hills, the Dutch, but they do have a lot of wind. Even so, the Dutch Headwind Championships has no fixed day, instead being put on when the forecast looks good enough or bad enough, depending on how you want to look at it. And it was bad enough on Saturday for it to take place in the Zeeland region of the Netherlands on a flat road they call Dutch Mountain, right by the sea, on a road that's about as exposed as you can get on a day when flights and sailings were cancelled due to wind gusts of 127 kilometers per hour. Nutters. There are three key rules to the Dutch Headwind Championships. Number one, wind speed must be at least seven Bofor, which is over 50 kilometers per hour. Number two, competitors have to ride eight and a half kilometers into that wind. And number three, they have to do so on a standard Dutch town bike. Sounds like one for last year, if you ask me. In fact, shall we have a pain and suffering compilation before I tell you the results? Yeah, okay. That looks grim, doesn't it? Uh, the concept arose in 2013 through Robrecht Stukenbroek, who says that almost every Dutch man and woman has endured a kind of trauma in their lives through cycling to school into a block headwind. And so he decided to recreate that trauma with these championships, which are now in their fifth year. Over 300 riders took part on the day. The men's winner was Max de Jong in a time of 18 minutes and 16 seconds, which is a pretty impressive average speed of 28 kilometers per hour, whilst Lisa Schenard won the women's in an equally impressive 20 minutes and 28 seconds. The best team was Team Neutstop, but I must say well done to everyone who took part. What a savage event, although the ride back must be quite nice. Over to the mud now, and with the big guns Matthew van der Poel and Wout van Aert on a mid-season training camp, the races were wide open in the cyclocross world at the weekend. At the Brico Cross on Saturday in Essen, it was Laurence Zweig who took advantage, coming home 19 seconds to the good of fellow Belgian Gianni Vermeesch, with David van der Poel in third place. In the women's event, Maud Captains took her first victory in over a year, 14 seconds ahead of Lucinda Brand. Brand, though, would get her own back the following day at the 81st edition of the Vlaams Druven Cross, which is described as the mother of all cross races. That win came despite three crashes on the muddy course. Each time she had to chase back to Nikki Bramier, her deficit eight seconds at the bell, but on the final lap she got everything right and eventually finished with 11 seconds to spare over the Brit. Ellen Van Looy had briefly led on the first lap, but then twisted her knee in a nasty looking crash, her team saying that she'd bruised some ligaments and would remain in hospital overnight for checks. We of course wish her all the best in her recovery. In the men's event there, World Cup leader Turnarts continued his stellar season, winning with a comfortable half minute advantage over Michael Van Turenhout. The mud though continues this weekend with the next round of the DVV trophy on Saturday and then the Super Prestige coming on Sunday, both of which are live here on GCN and both of which will have commentary from the one, the only, Tom Last. I know a lot of you have been missing him, so make sure you tune into that on our Facebook page. In other racing news, Annemiek van Vleuten was honoured by the Dutch sport minister Bruno Bruins last week after her courageous ride to a top 10 placing at the World Championships, which she did with a fractured tibia. Thoroughly deserved, I'd say. Van Vleuten is the queen of comebacks and she faces yet another long road to recovery right now after that crash. A few teams have been unveiling their 2019 jerseys. This is what Bulls Dolmans were wearing. A slightly different shade of orange and a bit more black than previous years. Team Katusha's shorts have remained almost the same, but their jersey has completely changed to a turquoise blue, which should be relatively easy to spot in the bunch. Whilst Lotto Sudau's kit looks comfortably familiar, although there is a little bit more white than there was this year. Incidentally, that Belgian squad has just signed the cross-country former mountain bike world champion Anika Langvad. Now watch out for her in the Hillier races next year. Meanwhile, former Tour and Giro stage winner Rimunas Navadauskas will swap jerseys completely. He's just confirmed that he'll move from Bahrain Merida to Delco Marseille next year. Meanwhile, Danny Rowe has announced that she is retiring from competitive cycling altogether. I must admit I was a little bit surprised about that one as she's had her best ever season on the road. However, it's on the track where she's achieved her major successes with three world titles and an Olympic gold. Not a bad haul, just 28 years of age. 
There's been some good news for the Drops women's team, whose crowdfunding campaign has been successful enough to see them continue into 2019. Despite losing Trek, their main sponsor, who will have their own women's team next year. And finally, Geraint Thomas has ended speculation that he may go back to the unfinished business he has with the Giro d'Italia next year by revealing that his main aim will be to defend his Tour de France title. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out at Team Sky next year, because you'd also imagine a fifth Tour title will be Chris Froome's number one goal. Right, we shall bookend today's racing news show with another interesting event which is brutal for a completely different reason. The Car Park Cannonball over in Christchurch, New Zealand. So, each category has 32 riders who go head-to-head -head in pairs as they race up eight floors of a multi-storey car park, which means that if you want to get to the final, you'll be doing the climb five times. Unfortunately for us roadies, it appears that the mountain bikers were showing us how it's done over there. In fact, they filled the first two spots in the men's event, with 16-year-old Jacob Turner getting the better of Cameron Kay. Kay, incidentally, was competing on flat pedals and in baggy clothes, having just taken the child seat off his bike the day before. It was a decent lineup too in the men's event, with last year's Zwift Academy winner Ollie Jones also taking part. Donna Head successfully defended her title in the women's geared event. And I have to say, that does look like a lot of fun. All proceeds from the event go towards men's health and Movember, so it's well worth supporting next year if you're in the area. Okay, that's all for this week's race news show. Don't forget to set a reminder on Facebook for the live cross events on GCN this weekend. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow with Cy on the GCN show, so we hope to have your company then. Before then though, if you can't get enough of your cyclocross at the moment, why not check out how Emma got on her first ever cyclocross race by clicking just down here.